فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم تنزيله وهو أصدق القائلين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يسرح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يدع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما <coughs> Faith and hope are closely related and as a believer we have to be the most hopeful and the most optimistic among the people and the farthest away from pessimism, complaining, dissatisfaction with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. This is because the true faith or iman indicates that we believe in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls everything and that nothing happens without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. Allah subhanahu wa taala He is the one who created death and He is the one who created life and it is to test all of us which one of us will do the best of deeds. And also this is because true faith indicates that the belief in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy, the boundless mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we set our hopes on that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty and the all merciful responds to distressed one when they call upon him and removes the evil and he is the one who gives with generosity and pardons, accepts repentance from his servant and forgives misdeeds he is more merciful to his servants than a mother is to her child. He is even kinder to his creatures than they are to themselves. So as a believer, you should never be in despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not even in the most difficult moments. That's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bring a way out for you out of anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the one who is mindful, who is aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who keeps the guidelines and who is always fulfilling the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finds for that person or gives that person a way out of any, whether it's difficulty or hardship. And also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَيَرْزُقُهُ Meaning, He gives them sustenance. That sometimes people might feel hopeless because of their situation or their condition. And, but the ones who are aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will give them sustenance and provision even in places that they might not realize and therefore they continue obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and fulfilling their purpose. As most of you guys are aware, for example, the story of Adam alayhi salam, many scholars have commented on these stories and, and many people know there are multitudes of lessons that you could take away from it. I, wanted, I read a, a quote by Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, where he said, Satan rejoiced when Adam السلام, came out of paradise. But he did not know that when a diver sinks into the sea, he collects pearls and then rises again. This quote to me was very deep and you could extract many lessons from it. From the first part, we 
understand that Satan is from the Satan rejoicing that he is a clear enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us many places in the Quran. And one of the weapons that he have against us is to make us lose the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has sworn to see us suffer and to distract us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Qala, fabi'izzatik, O Allah, by your might, la'ugwiyannahum ajma'in, I will surely mislead them all. Illa ibadaka minhumul mukhlasin, except the chosen slaves, those that are faithful and obedient. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kulu fi silmi kafah, wa la tattabi'u khutuwati shaytan, innahu lakum aduun mubeen. O you who believe, enter perfectly into Islam, and follow not the footsteps of shaytan, verily, he is to you a clear and open enemy. So, one of the greatest defenses against the whispers of shaitan, especially when you feel that you have sinned and that you have strayed from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that many of us, we despair. You know, some, some people when you say, subhanallah, brother, you know, why don't you stop this, or sister, you know, or they know deep down, even though maybe they might refuse or say whatever, they know deep down there is a whisper that say, oh, I'm just this bad person. Oh, it doesn't matter. Jannah, you know, Allah. You know, there's something inside where the whispers of shaitan over and over again that told him that, you know what, I'm not righteous. I'm not good. So it doesn't really matter even if I make tawbah, it's, you know, make dua for me. Maybe uh, some of you guys have heard that. All of these words are words of despair. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is the most forgiving. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَضُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ All you who believe, all, all my, say, O Muhammad, to my servants, the ones who have transgressed against themselves. لا تقنظوا من رحمة الله Do not ever despair of the mercy of Allah. Allah is saying, He is waiting for you to turn back, to ask Him forgiveness, to There is a hadith, hadith al-Quds, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this was narrated by Anas radiallahu an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam, so long as you call upon me and ask of me, I shall forgive you for what you have done and I shall not mind. O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky, and were you then to ask for forgiveness of me, I will forgive you. O son of Adam, were you to come to me with sins nearly as great as the earth, and were you then to face me, ascribing no partners to me, I would bring your forgiveness nearly as great as, as it is. Even if your sins, subhanAllah, were to reach the clouds in the sky, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. Then you ask, why is it that people are not rushing to make tawbah, to ask for forgiveness? The doors of Allah are open. How come we are not rushing? How come there are not lines? It is because the plain enemy has convinced us otherwise. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, no, will not forgive you. At first, he entices you and whispers to you that this is easy, you know, as Iblis, you know, not only Iblis, but the shayateen, whether they are human beings or jinn, but the human beings, the, those are the ones we sometimes we don't even know. They are the ones who are misguiding us. They'll tell you, it's okay, you're having fun. It's relaxed, it's just one time. But then you do it, and then you do it, and then when the sins, you know, the drops of the, the black dots start going into your hearts, and you're, you start sinning, the sin has, you know, uh, what do you call, side effects, right? Then all of a sudden, you start, you know, having that regret. Because all of us, there is the, the fitra that's within us, that we know this is harm that we're doing to ourselves. But he's saying, no, don't worry, you're having fun. You need more of it. You need to do more sins in order for this pain or this thing to go away. So then the person continues sinning until the sin circle the person. Until the person becomes in a cage because of those sins. And they cannot get out. Why? It's too late. You're addicted already. It's too late. The habit has already formed. It's too late. You try it and you fall. And every time Satan is there to remind you of your failure. To tell you you failed again. You're not going to do this. Don't Forget about it. This is who you are. You are a sinner. So accept yourself as a sinner. The Prophet وسلم, he said, Kullu bin Adam khata. Yes, every bin Adam is khata. Every human being is a sinner. But the best of sinners are who? Those who repent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this hadith, we learn that we are sinners. We will sin. But Allah made part of that is so that we can repent, so that we can it's a test so that you can come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you can repent if you didn't sin then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghafoor he is the, the forgiver how could he be al-ghafoor he is al-ghafoor he is the forgiver because you sin Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu relates that one time there were prisoners brought before the Prophet ﷺ, and amongst them was a woman who was frantically searching for someone in the crowd. She's, she's looking around, she's looking around. When finally she found there was a baby amongst the prisoners, she took it in her arms and cradled it to her chest and then started suckling the baby. Rasulullah ﷺ said, do you think that this woman would ever throw her child into the fire? And the Sahaba said, by Allah, never. He said, Allah is more merciful to his servants than the mother could ever be to her child. SubhanAllah. Allah is more merciful to you than to that child, that suckling that was looking. There's another hadith, as you guys know, it's famous hadith that the man who went into the desert and there's no, no water there, no nothing, and then he loses his camel. And when he loses his camel where the water and the food and everything was there, he has nothing now. He basically sits around, waits around, and just gives up and just kind of, you know, dozes off and then when he wakes up he sees that the, the camel is there and he la you know with shock shockingly and says you know oh Allah you are my servant and I you know you are my slave and I am 
he basically doesn't even know the words that he's saying. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more happy. Is more happy when one of his servants turns back and repents and asks for forgiveness. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters do not ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah nor underestimate your potential don't let the shaitan win he wants you to lose hope in Allah and if you lose hope in Allah, then what is left? <coughs> it's okay to keep falling as long as you keep getting back up. <coughs> Never give up. Not until your last heartbeat. The next time you're feeling hopeless, think of the following. Number one, Allah created us all as sinners. Abu Huraira reported, as we said, the Prophet ﷺ said, by him in whose hand is my soul, if you did not sin, Allah would replace you with people who would sin. And they would seek the forgiveness of Allah and he would forgive them. And this is in Sahih al-Muslim. Number two, even if you sin, you can still draw closer to Allah. For to us, some of us, it sounds like a contradiction. But every son of Adam, as we said, sins, and the best of those who sin are those who repent. It's not about perfection. Remember, Allah never commanded us to be, to be absolutely perfect. This is not what He expects us from. But instead, He told us to try our very best. The struggle that you're going through we have so many stories. The man who killed 99 people and then he seeked, he went to a, a, a worshiper who, and then the worshiper said, God will never forgive you. And then he killed him, made him 100, right? And then he went to, and then the alim, the scholar told him, yes, Allah will forgive you, but you have to repent. And you have to leave this sin and you have to leave town. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sees what is in your heart, sees your effort. <coughs> Those who are striving towards our path, we will guide them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Your sins will never outweigh Allah's mercy. And finally, never stop drawing towards Allah, no matter what your situation is. Hope in the mercy of Allah is essential. We are getting closer to the month of Ramadan and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us reach the month of Ramadan. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is the time that we need to start making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this month, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to fast a lot, used to ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this month of mercy is coming. Do not be, don't, don't be caught in Ramadan not ready. They say if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Prepare right now. Make the intention. This is a sweepstakes time of forgiveness. This is the month of mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives people and frees people. And the shaitan, that open enemy, is locked up. He will not get to us this month. This is a month that you will, you will get the whole community support in the khair and, 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 and the, the, the good deeds and, and everything. Use it as a boot camp. Use it as a time 
where you can build your Iman. Stop those bad habits. Turn back from that, that, that destructive path. All of us. One of the ways, the last thing I want to say is that the shaitan sometimes convinces us is that I am all good. Because I, am, I have a beard and I wear the thobe and I come to masjid, I pray on the front line. But maybe the shaitan is tricking you another way. Maybe your tongue is loose and you're talking behind people's back. Maybe you have a hasad and, 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 and something towards another brother or sister. Maybe this. So don't, don't ever feel safe from that enemy. Because consistently he said, I will wait for them in every path, in your path. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب إن الله وملائكته الله سبحانه وتعالى This is the last thing I want to say Let's start today by asking for forgiveness. And let's decide today that we will all turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that if we see someone else, a brother or a sister that's also struggling, that we help them that with the hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us in our path to turn to Him.